Good afternoon, good afternoon, folks. Good afternoon. Long time no speak. <laughs> it's been a minute since I've been before you. I trust that everyone has been uh, fine and your families are well and you've been well since the last time we've come before one another. Uh, myself, I've been under the weather. I've been under the weather. And, uh, you know, with the approach of the winter season, it has grabbed a hold of me a little bit. I've gotten over it. Um, getting over it, I should say. Um, but nonetheless, I didn't go unscathed <laughs> with this uh, with this turn of the weather. Because, I mean, as you know, we went from having a, a lot of nice days, warm days, to... Uh, sporadic periods where it was cold, very cold. So it went from cold to hot to hot to cold, you know. And when you have those up and down climates in the season, it tends to get a hold of you at some point, no matter what you do. Your body just can't seem to get acclimated to the weather conditions. But we're here, and uh, I trust that everyone, all of you are well. Shout out to all my new subscribers on YouTube. I appreciate you. Shout out to all of my faithful members of my Facebook group. Let's talk about it. And again, to my uh, new subscribers, for let's talk about it now on YouTube. Again, I appreciate you. I look forward to your continued support. Uh, we're going to get into a subject tonight. Um, I will tell you, a subject that needs to be dealt with, addressed and spoken about because all too often too many individuals who perhaps are not guilty perhaps are not guilty of the allegations charges that they've endured and as a result of those allegations their lives have been turned upside down and inside out um, before we go into it, I want to do a little housekeeping. As you come into the building, hit the subscribe button and hit the share button. Again, I appreciate your support. To my moderators, if you can hear my voice clearly, give me a one in the signal. Shout out to Abdul. Shout out to Gail. Appreciate you for getting on the stream tonight. If you can hear my voice clearly, put a one in the chat room. If you can hear my voice clearly if the music in the, is at uh, proper levels awesome thank you Gail okay we're gonna get started um, this is a subject that uh, I'm gonna touch very delicately and I'll tell you why I'm gonna touch it very delicately I'm gonna deal with it direct but I'm gonna be delicate at the same time um, because it's a subject like I said, that has affected so many people throughout the years, many of whom I believe personally were guilty of the allegations that was levied against them. And then there are some who allegations were levied against them that came with no real tangible proof, simply an allegation. Um, I, what I intend to do tonight is try to educate you, the listener, as to the danger of an allegation and how it can literally turn your life upside down, inside out. Allegations that are false or at least allegations that cannot be verified as proof in a court of law has done more harm to destroy people's life and to destroy a person's reputation. In some cases, unrepairable, unrepairable. I want to make it clear that any of us, no matter who we are, we are susceptible to false allegations, no matter where they come from. Whether they come from outside or whether they come from within our own family, 
Allegations are just that. Allegations. Alleged. Situations. Alleged circumstances. Alleged acts. Meaning, there is no proof to an allegation. An allegation simply remains just that. An allegation. Until it's proven. And what I want, what I would love to see is that we as a country not just we as a community that we become very conscious very aware that an allegation and the dangers of an allegation if in fact it's not proven We're gonna, i'm going to talk i'm going to highlight one specific individual tonight um uh, mr russell simmons the allegations that he found himself under and I mean, he found himself under some serious allegations. Oh, man. Some serious allegations indeed. But I want to I wanna break down first. And I'm going to share my screen. But And then I'm going to share a video piece uh, from YouTube that was dealing with the allegations that was levied against Mr. Russell Simmons. But first, I want to break down what an allegation does. Um, this is an article from a law firm called Wilder Law Firm. They, they broke down and highlighted areas of an accusation. How to defend yourself against false accusations. It reads like this. False accusations can ruin a person's life and have real consequences in criminal and civil proceedings. Unfortunately, false accusations happen in divorce child custody cases far too often false accusations can also involve sexual harassment in the workplace and I'm a, let me let me stop right there with the sexual harassment involving the workplace a lot of times you can be in a workplace and I'm going to speak from a male perspective right now and you can see a young lady and uh, you may find her attractive and you may meet her eyes with yours. And just in that small gesture, depending on what mental, emotional disposition she finds herself in at that moment, she can see that as an offense. She can take offense to that. All you did was look at her. And she'll read more into how you looked at her than what the actual look was and what the intent of looking at her was and bring up charges or accusations of uh, sexual harassment. And I'm sure that many of you that hear this stream, many, some of you have probably experienced this already on your jobs, where it was purely innocent. All you did was look at the young lady, or you may have said, you know, I like, the, I like that dress you have on today, or um, I like the way your hair is today. Or what is that perfume you're wearing today? It smells good. And depending on the disposition, the mental, emotional disposition that that young lady may find herself in at the time that you make that statement could easily offend and she could take it the wrong way. Now, did you say anything wrong from a cursory glance? Absolutely not. Did you say anything offensive? No, didn't sound offensive. But you, what, what, what is my point? My point is this. Anything that you say during this sensitive Me Too era that we find ourselves in today could be very well taken to offense. This is what makes men in general uh, very fearful, I would say, and cautious at even giving a compliment at even thinking about giving a compliment to the opposite sex for fear that even the mildest slightest innocent most innocent compliment can be taken wrong and as a result their whole career could be destroyed their their whole aspirations in life could be detoured as a result of a false allegation 
this is where this is this is where I'm I'm to deal with tonight because this has become a very serious and this has become a very pervasive thing not just in this country but outside of this country you know it's one thing to have a movement to empower women who find themselves victim to this kind of heinous behavior on the uh, on the hands of a man or even at the hands of another female because uh make no mistake about it sexual harassment and things of this nature take place on both sides but we know all too often where this kind of accusation or allegation is directed it's usually directed where a male is concerned from the opposite sex so we want to just deal with it now i want to say this too as a disclaimer this is not an attack I want to make this very, 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 very clear. I want to make this very clear. This is not an attack on any female that has found themselves a victim of any kind of sexual harassment whatsoever. Or has found themselves victim to uh, any kind of sexual assault. No, this is not an attack on you. I am on your side. If, in fact, you have been attacked, I believe, personally, that you should report it. I believe you should report it immediately. Don't waste any time. Don't lose years. Don't lose months. Don't lose time in reporting it. Report it immediately. And get to the justice that you believe you deserve as a result of that assault. I am on your side where that's concerned. So in no way, I want to be clear, this stream, nor, the, this, nor does this platform support any assault of any kind, physical or sexual, where a female is concerned. No, I don't support that at all. I believe the animals that do that should be dealt with accordingly. But I want to just open our eyes a little bit as to as to how many directions that these kind of allegations can take okay so i want you to listen with an open mind and uh not get triggered but just listen with an open mind as to how i'm going to deal with this subject tonight all right again this says false accusations can ruin a person's life and have real consequences in criminal and civil proceedings. Unfortunately, false accusations happen in divorce and child custody cases far too often. We know that. False accusations can also involve sexual harassment in the workplace, domestic violence, and assault. Many of us assume that the truth will always prevail through the court system. This is not always the case. However, the accused person may not know how to properly defend themselves, having a real effect on their lives. If you have been falsely accused in legal matters, it is important to know what steps to take. How many of us know what steps to take? I'm going to highlight a few of those steps according to this article. Being falsely accused, first it says to stay calm. Being falsely accused of committing a crime can be a devastating. For many, being falsely accused of a heinous crime, sexual harassment, or child abuse takes a toll emotionally and physically. After being falsely accused, it is a natural response to try to fight back and defend yourself. However, defending yourself and responding to false accusations in a rash and angry way can hurt your case. Let's stop there. What is the initial reaction that you get if you're falsely accused? Many of us can remember as we were growing up, if someone said we did something <laughs> and we felt we did not do that, the initial human reaction is to become angry and sometimes to begin defending ourselves very aggressively, right? 
But what this article is saying is that to defend yourself that way, to react that way could hurt your case. Why? Because the public may see that reaction and take it the wrong way. They may say th something like, like along these lines, uh, why are you being so defensive if you didn't do anything? Right? Why are you being so defensive if, uh, if you're innocent, you know? And, uh, why are you getting so emotional if you did nothing, you know? I think that's an unfair assessment of a human response to when they're being accused of something that they did not do. I think that's unfair. But this is what they're saying in this article. And this, is coming, this is coming from a law firm. They said it could hurt your case. It is important to remember that accusations are a marathon, not a sprint. What does that mean? We know what marathons are. Marathon is a long protracted race it's not something that happens as quickly as we see it in a sprint this is something that takes place over a period of time which means it's going to require something out of you the accused it's going to require endurance it's going to require endurance and it's going to require some staying power to stay in the race until it's finished that's why it's called a marathon and not a sprint I think that's pretty sad but that's what makes it more important more and more important that if in fact an accusation is a marathon and not a sprint that we as human beings male or female would be careful I mean extremely careful and thought and in thought and in actions and words how we accuse someone of something or levy allegations against someone someone right that could potentially destroy their lives again an accusation is a marathon and not a sprint which means this can linger on in this person's life for a long <laughs> protracted period of time something to think about it goes on to say, even if you feel justified in defending yourself, it will only give the other side more evidence to use against you, as I just mentioned. For example, suppose the false accusations involve child abuse or neglect. These allegations could have a negative impact on your child custody order. Begin engaging in angry, mean, or irrational behavior even though you feel justified the judge could determine that you were an unfit parent and may not grant you custody or visitation rights in the future. Mind you, this is all based on how you respond. It goes on. If you have been falsely accused of a crime, it is even more important that you remain calm and carefully think about how you react. Do not answer questions or talk to the police without having a defense attorney possible. Trying to explain what happened and clear your name can be tempting. And we know that's tempting. We know that's tempting. When you've been falsely accused, however, it is best to wait for your attorney before speaking to the police. Police officers are trained to elicit confessions out of suspects, even false confessions. They will also try to pressure you to waive your legal rights not to speak to them without your attorney. Both of these things are true. Even if you have been arrested due to a false accusation, stay firm and tell the police that you will not speak to them without your attorney present. Doing so will help your legal defense significantly. Let me stop, stop right there also. Here's a, in, in a lot of cases, and I'm sure many of you that um, they hear the stream will know that I'm correcting what I'm about to say. You're told not to speak unless you have an attorney present, right? Okay. Here's what comes behind it. Well, if you have nothing to hide or if you're innocent, why do you need an attorney present to speak to law enforcement? Why not just tell your side of the story if you're 
innocent and you have nothing to hide, right? This is what, this is the kind of uh, manipulation that will be levied against you if in fact you will find yourself falsely accused, right? Even if you're guilty of what you're being accused of, the smart individual will still keep his mouth shut. But today we're talking about the danger of being falsely accused and how it can damage your whole entire life. All right. I'm going to focus tonight on this particular stream with uh, on individual again, Mr. Russell Simmons and the many allegations that were levied against him. But first, I want to go into some stats some data and some statistics as it relates to this kind of uh, allegation. And what happens? These are the stats for women in, in this country. One in five women. One in five women in the United States experienced uh, completed or attempted grape during their lifetime. I'm going to use the term grape for social media purposes but it says one in five women in the united states experienced completed or attempted grape during their lifetime nearly a quarter 24.8 percent of men in the united states experienced some form of contact sexual violence in their lifetime and let me say this um all too often, no attention is ever given to how many men, believe it or not, <laughs> that experience sexual assault in this country. Oh, my goodness. The numbers would blow your mind, blow your mind between the ages of 11 and 17 years of age. It would blow your mind. But I wanted to say all of that as a backdrop. And then I want to go into the movement of that spurred this uh the energy i would say the courage for women who are victims of being sexually assaulted many of whom have been graped in this country and throughout this country um i want to i want to go to the movement that spurred the courage and many of them that have remained silent most of whom have remained silent their entire life. I want to go into that. That movement is called the Me Too movement. Let's go into how this whole movement started. Okay? The Me Too movement is a social movement against sexual abuse, sexual harassment, and great culture. In which people publicize their experience of sexual abuse or sexual harassment. The phrase Me Too was initially used in this context on social media in 2006. On MySpace, I know many of you remember MySpace, that's going back a little bit, by sexual assault survivors and activists, Terena Burke. Harvard University published a case study on Burke called Leading with Empathy, Terena Burke and the Making of the Me Too Movement in 2020. The hashtag Me Too was used starting in 2017 as a way to draw attention to the magnitude of the problem. The purpose of Me Too is initially voiced by Burke as well as those who later adopted the tactic is to empower sexually assaulted people, especially young and vulnerable women of color, through empathy, solidarity, and strength in numbers by visibly demonstrating how many have experienced sexual assault and harassment, especially in the workplace. Following the exposure of numerous sexual abuse allegations against film producer Harvey Weinstein in October of 2017, the movement began to spread virally in a hashtag on social media. On October the 16th, 2017, American actress Alyssa Milano posted on Twitter, if all the women who have been sexually harassed or assaulted wrote me too as a status we might give people a sense of the magnitude of the problem saying that uh she got the idea from a friend a number of high profile posts and 
responses from the American celebrities. Gwyneth Paltrow, Ashley Judd, Jennifer Lawrence, and Uma Thurman, among others, soon followed widespread media coverage and discussion of sexual harassment, particularly in Hollywood, led to high-profile terminations from positions held as well as criticisms and backlash. After millions of people started using the phrase and hashtag in this manner in English, the, um, the expression began to spread to dozens of other languages. The scope has become somewhat broader with this expansion, however, as Burke has more recently referred to it as an ex international movement for justice for marginalized people. After the hashtag MeToo went viral in the late 2017s, Facebook reported that almost half of its, its American users were friends with someone who said they had been sexually assaulted or harassed. Now let me say this. Here's what's really sad. All too often, and I'm going to deal with women who are assaulted, women who are raped, at the hands of men who, in, in many cases, are powerful men, considered powerful, financially well off, millionaires, billionaires. In a lot of cases, these women are employed by these individuals. They work on their staff. And on a lower level, on an executive level, you have CEOs of companies. They have secretaries. They have uh, personal assistants. Assistants. Um, they have women who work underneath them in different capacities and they serve them in these capacities according to their job description and i'll tell you something all too often these ladies are taken advantage of they're taken advantage of in so many different ways in a lot of ways in a lot of cases it's sexual abuse in a lot of cases it's uh sexual harassment either in words deeds different little slangs jokes so many different areas so many different ways a lot of women are sexually harassed in these environments when they find themselves subordinate to authority that may be employing them in these different uh, environments okay now some will say well why didn't you say anything when you were abused? Why'd you, why didn't you say anything? Why did it take you so long to say something? Well, here's what, here's what I would say to that. Because there's two things you could say to that, but here's what I would say first to that. If you're underneath authority of someone that you work for and you're employed, which means your livelihood is based on that employment. That employer, who may be a powerful individual, could be a CEO of a company, could be the owner of the company, right? If you're in the law industry, meaning you're up becoming attorney and you're female and you work underneath a law firm, you're not a partner in that law firm, you're just kind of work underneath that law firm all right so you kind of you're trying to work your way up and you experience these kind of harassments in a lot of cases what women will do they'll sacrifice themselves and what they feel and what they're experiencing for the fact that they're in a position that they can move up in their career so they may, they may, they may, they remain, they may remain silent. They may remain silent for long periods of time to protect their career, to protect their career. And as a result, the men in those arenas who wish to prey on women like that, 
Under those circumstances, they take advantage of that fear. They know she's afraid. They know she wants to keep her career. They know she wants to keep her job. So they'll use that fear against her and continue abusing her for years without no recourse because she's afraid to report it. She's afraid to report it. Terrified to report it. She's in the acting industry. She wants to become an actress. She's underneath directors. She's underneath producers. She's underneath uh, movie labels that can move her career forward. And yet she's in a male dominated environment and she's being sexually harassed and she's being sexually, in many cases, abused. Graped even. Touched inappropriately. Spoken to in sexual terms inappropriately. She has to smile. She has to pretend she didn't hear it. Or she has to pretend she's okay with it. Because she's trying to go somewhere in her career. And afraid to say anything because she doesn't believe that anyone's going to believe her anyway if she does. Well, I'm going to touch both sides of this tonight she's afraid to say anything so when we come to the question of well why did you take so long to say something why did it take you 10 years to say something uh why did it take you 15 years to say something well i can't answer that question i can't answer the questions beyond five to be honest with you but I do, I am acutely aware of why many women keep their mouth shut and they don't report these kind of things that are happening to them. Instead, they endure it in silence for years, for years. Some of them find themselves married with children, never having revealed the abuse that they endured to their new husbands. Never having revealed the uh, abuse that they endured to even their family members for years. But I also want to talk about another side of that spectrum. What is the other side of that spectrum? I believe that there are also in every situation, and we know this, if we have a... Um, if we have a racial situation in any particular community, we find those that are sincerely in protest of that injustice. And then we find those who we deem as what? Opportunists. We know what the opportunists do. The opportunists, they they loot the stores, the, you know, they don't care. They care they could care less about the protests. They just want to be a part of the chaos of the protest so they can take advantage of looting the stores and running out of stores with TVs and stereos. And, you know, you understand. So I believe there I don't believe there's any movement whatsoever where you won't you won't find an opportunist. And what I want to address tonight is the opportunist. Not the victims who are truly victims. No, I'm not talking to you. I want to see you get justice. But I want to speak to the opportunists who make it so very difficult for those that are truly victims to get the justice that they so desperately seek from this kind of abuse. I want to talk to you, the opportunist. The one that just finds a movement and then jump on board and say, you know, I think I can benefit here. I think I can benefit here. Uh, I remember a few text messages I got from that guy, uh, you know, in high school. Even though I'm 40 years old now, I, I, I remember some text messages I got in high school or, or my first year of college. And yeah, I think I can jump on board this whole movement here and uh, it, perhaps I can benefit from this. You know, I think this is I think this is just as heinous 
as the act itself. I think this is just as heinous as the act itself. So I wanted to say, I wanted to leave all of that on the table as a backdrop. As I go into this story in dealing with Mr. Russell Simmons and the many accusations that was levied against him. The many accusations that have leveled, leveled against him. And again, I thank all of you for getting on the stream tonight. Again, shout out to all of my new subscribers. If you've come into the building, if you've just come into the building, hit the subscribe button and share button. That way we can keep the content available. And uh, yeah, we're going to get right into this right now. We're going to get right into this. Again, this is about Mr. Russell Simmons. Let's get into it. Into related to one of the lives from Run DMC. No matter how you were introduced to Russell Simmons, I doubt sexual predator was on your. I was today years old when I found out Bingo Car, entrepreneur Negro and legendary music and TV mogul. Russell Simmons rose to prominence during the 80s when he founded Def Jam Recordings. The label would project hip-hop's finest from the corners of the streets to Wall Street. Responsible for propelling rap under the world's mainstream gaze, Russ goes down in history for his exceptional contributions to the culture. But following the allegations, over 20 women claiming he assaulted them over the span of 40 years, Russell may also go down as one of the industry's top predators. Another one bites the dust. What is it about these men with large sums of money preying on vulnerable young women? Hmm, what and is men, it? It's like a never-ending revolving door of wealthy men being accused of the most treacherous crimes. But before we slam down our gavels, let's give the internet jury a chance to come to their verdict. Russell Simmons is truly a jack of all trades, a successful businessman, CEO, fashion designer, label exec, and a fair whole use. host of fair use. longer than the yellow brick road chairman and co-founder of the Def Jam Recordings label. He helped launch the careers of some of the biggest names in the game, like Public Enemy, LL Cool J, DMX, Kanye West, and the Beastie Boys. On top of giving the greats their big break, Simmons is also responsible for giving comedy's finest their big breaks. From Martin Lawrence to Chris Rock, and even Dave Chappelle when he founded Def Comedy Jam. Fat Farm, his luxury meets the streets clothing brand, established in 1992, took over the decade as well as the new millennium, and is often credited for setting the tone for the trends we see, saw, in hip hop. Social justice contributor, animal and gay rights activist, a spiritualist and vegan consumer, Russell from the outside looking in may appear to have one of the most well-known yet grounded careers of all time. Given his yogi practices and holistic nature, you'd picture Russell as the perfect candidate for wholesome living. Apparently, that couldn't be farther from the truth. If, well, I'll be damned was a person. Russell's determination <laughs> to help the so-called black community by creating resources, his rush cards, for example, marketed to make the lives of the blacks easier. Under Remember the that rush card, right? <laughs> Despite being with long-term girlfriend turned ex-wife turned ex Kamora Lee, who was of Asian descent, who he got with when she was just 17 and he 35. Let's stop right there. Let's stop right there. <laughs> Here's Kamora was 17 and he was 35. Now see, now see, that's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem, folks. <clears throat> I mean, what self-respecting parent is going to allow your daughter to be dating with a man who's 35 years of age and you haven't even reached 18 years of age yet? She's 17. He's 35. See, these are the beginnings of what we call red flags. Red flags. Oh, yeah. These are red flags. See, today, Russell Simmons, he has daughters of his own. 
I wonder if he would have allowed such an arrangement. Something to think about. Let's continue. A devoted father figure, Russell isn't shy about his mission to make the world a better place. But not everything that glitters is gold. And supposedly, Russell is out here giving a solo live action play of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. When he stepped into the 21st century, I guess Russ thought he was going to leave all his bad business deals and crimes in the late 1900s. Creator of many, but too bad he didn't create the internet because we have the receipts. <laughs> You ever got the feeling that something was a little off about Simmons, but can't quite put your finger on it? If so, you aren't alone. Many have been calling out Russell's degenerate behavior for decades now, from fake woke alibis to being a serial atheist. Go ahead and put an R in front of that. Something in the buttermilk just ain't clean when it comes to so-called Uncle Russell. Look, I know comedy is subjective, but some skits and sketches just don't need to be done. Especially one centering Harriet Tubman in a fake sexual tape. In 2013, Russell thought that would be a good idea to launch a parody video uploaded to his all-deaf digital YouTube channel. Be How many of y'all remember this skit? Because I remember it. I know when I first saw this skit, I was furious when I saw this skit. I thought it was the epitome of disrespect. Um... <laughs> but nonetheless, Mr. Simmons thought it would be okay to do that. He thought it was a good idea. I don't know who told him it was a good idea to use a historical figure like Harriet Tubman in this manner. To make what point? I have no idea. What exactly <laughs> was your point? <laughs> he thought it was a good idea, though. Another red flag. Let's continue. Featuring an actress portraying abolitionist Harriet Tubman getting her back blown out. Sorry to all of our younger viewers. You may want to skip this part. Sister Harriet was doing and recording the deed done with her slave owner with the intent of blackmailing him to work on the Underground Railroad. As you would expect, this caused major backlash and folks were not here for the foolishness. Well, he created Deaf Comedy Jam, what do you expect? And to that we say, you're absolutely right. Different times call for different measures, I guess. Even director Spike Lee wasn't here for Russell's creative vision. Of course, Russ came out with an apology shortly after stating how liberal he is. While there are still injustices everywhere, Harriet outwitting the slave owners was politically correct, and yada, yada, yada. I may have apologized, but I'm not taking down a thing. And he didn't. I'm sure you can find the video floating about on the internet somewhere. Who remembers those rush car commercials that last all of 15 seconds? In 2003, Russell created the Rush Card, a prepaid debit card designed to help Fair use. in low Fair income use. regions. Targeting the black American community, the Rush Card sounded great on paper, but when the rollouts came rolling out, it went from helping those in need to taking all of their coins with no hopes of getting them back. A 2015 technical glitch prevented thousands of Rush Card customers from accessing their funds during a days long outage, freezing the accounts of over 100,000 of its users, resulting in bounced checks, unfilled prescriptions, and eviction notices. The outage resulted in a class action lawsuit estimated to have been about $19 million. Rush Card went from playing, oop, and black people's faces under the pretense of building credit to giving over 20 million in settlements. Wow. Russ rushed to jump ship just two years later, selling his once promising cards to Green Dot for over a hundred million dollars. His questionable visionary content and shady business practices may be skeptical, but all are relatively minuscule compared to his lengthy list of abuse allegations spanning from 1983 to 2016. And I gotta warn you, the following details are triggering. In case you weren't aware of the hashtag MeToo movement, popularized by the high profile case of Harvey Weinstein, the former movie producer and Miramax founder facing decades in prison on assault charges and his accusers, created by Tanya Burke, the women and men speaking out about their own encounters with predators and abusers hit way too close to home for many across the globe. Celebs and non-celebs alike disclosed experiences 
and recounted their own stories of assault, encouraging others to come forward with their stories. They came forward all right and haven't slowed down a bit. The industry's lowest hanging fruit were bound to be exposed any day now. In the words of Hip Hop Harry, who's next? Calling yoga enthusiast Russell Simmons to the front, please. Russell has been accused by not one, not two, but over 20 different women in the last wow. four decades. Starting with musician Sherry Hines, a founding member of the first all-girl hip-hop group, Mercedes Ladies. She recalls Russell calling her into his office in 1983 for a so-called business meeting. Sat down next to her on the couch. Let me say this, folks. I'm going to tell you something I truly believe. I don't believe for one second that a man who's living a clean life devoid of scandal who basically keeps his hand to the plow of his own career uh, who protects himself from being a man of any reputation by putting himself in places he should not be by being around individuals he should not be around there's so many celebrities and so many people that are successful who do not have to endure this kind of scandal so i'm not blind to the fact that if you find yourself in these kind of scandals that you're not guilty of something or you're guilt you're guilty of something whether you're guilty to the amount of allegations that's levied against you that's where the question lies that's where the courts are involved that's where the burden of proof lies but i don't believe for one second that a man or a woman that is living a life that is clean and they're protecting themselves from scandal or becoming an individual of reputation where someone has something that they could even find to say about you. There's too many actors and too many actresses that I could name. You know, Angela Bassett, one of them. You've heard no scandal on her name. You've heard no scandal on her husband's name. I could go down a list of many different actors and actresses and so many different successful men and women in this country that are not subject to these kind of scandals there is some truth to these to these allegations um how much of those allegations are true and to what percentage of those allegations are simply those seeing it as an opportunity is something that i can't call but if you are protecting yourself against having those kind of scandals in your life i don't believe they'll just surface out of nowhere i don't believe that they'll just pop up like toast out of nowhere no not at all i don't believe 15 16 18 20 30 women could come up and say that you did something to them and at least five or six of them you were not guilty of doing it that's just my opinion you know um that's just my opinion i don't believe a person who lives a clean life could find themselves victim to these kind of scandals out of nowhere especially with so many alleged victims i just i'm just not i just don't buy it you know let's continue and R-worded her right then and there when she was just 17. Model Kiri Clausen Kaliki begged for help as Russell coerced her into giving him oral pleasures in 1991 when she was also only 17, while film producer Brett Ratner sat there and watched. She also says he came up behind her and penetrated her without permission while she was taking a shower. Wow. Lisa Kirk alleged that Simmons followed her into a nightclub bathroom in 1988 and attempted to assault her. Tony Sally knew Russell through her work for the magazine Black Radio Exclusive and says he was inappropriate with her twice. 
1998, he invited her over to his apartment under the pretense he was throwing a party before assaulting her. He pushed me on the bed and jumped on top of me and physically attacked me. Tony also alleges that Russell followed her into a bathroom at a music conference, but managed to escape to another room and made sure to barricade the door. Screenwriter Jenny Lumet, who just so happens to be the granddaughter of actress and dancer Lena Horne, claims Russell coerced her into relations after having his driver take them to his home against her will. Wow. Drew Dixon, a former Def Jam A&R exec and daughter of former DC Mayor Sharon Pratt Dixon, accused Simmons of abuse. Actress Natasha Williams Block alleged that he attempted to force her to perform oral on him after attending a yoga class together. Massage therapist Aaron Beatty was exposed to his degeneracy after booking her for a massage while staying at the Alexis Hotel in Seattle. Halfway through the rubdown, Beatty says he exposed himself. He was like, do you want to work this out? He just expected that was what was going to happen. He couldn't believe I would say no. Kelly Catrone ran into him at a party downtown and insisted he had to go to a friend's apartment to grab weed. She went with him thinking nothing of it. After gesturing for her to go inside, not even seconds later, he came up behind her and pushed her hard, resulting in her hitting the floor. He got on top of me and flipped me over. He was grabbing my face, trying to force his tongue in my mouth, put his hands on my breast, all over the place. He was pressing up against me and grinding his body on mine. I started to scream. I yelled at him to stop. I kept trying to push him off of me while he held me down. At one point, I looked him in the eye and I told him to have him killed. I kicked, twisted, and kicked some more until he got off of me and I ran out the door. Real Housewives of New York City star Luann de Lesseps claims he grabbed her inappropriately while in an elevator. He grabbed my butt in an elevator. He was just a pig. I haven't told anybody about that before. I was grossed out. I was like, how dare you? As more and more accusers came forward, actor Terry Crews accused Simmons of attempting to influence him to take back sexual assault allegations that Crews brought up against film executive Adam Vinnett, whom he claims grabbed his junk in front of everyone at a party, asking that Terry give him a pass and be reinstated. Terry would later post a screenshot on his Twitter account of the email he had received from Russell. Once the domino effect of accusers were spilling out from every which way, hmm. Russell attempted to do damage control right. by denying all allegations, giving PR right. statements. I vehemently deny all the allegations made against me. They have shocked me to my core as I have never been abusive or violent in any way in my relations with women. I am blessed to have shared extraordinary relationships, whether through work or love, with many great women, and I have enormous respect for the women's movement worldwide and their struggle for respect, dignity, equality, and power. I am devastated by any reason I may have given to anyone to say or think of me in the ways that are currently being described. I have separated myself from my businesses and charities to not become a distraction. Different time periods may be a given, but the majority of Russell Simmons' accusers all share a common story. They were either lured to some place or followed. The accusations shared in this video aren't even a fraction of the dozens of other alleged victims. Wow. The countless stories of young women pleading with one of hip-hop's most powerful moguls, Seal Lai Abrams, Alexia Norton-Jones, Christina Moore, Amanda Seals, Karen Russell, and the list goes on and on and on. Majority black women, all silenced out of fear. The fear of being shunned by both men and women within and outside of the industry. The allegations were so severe that a documentary titled On the Record was ordered to HBO Max in 2020. Following the stories of some of Simmons' alleged victims, Russell was also a contributor to Oprah Winfrey's book, the Wisdom of Sundays. Hmm. However, Oprah wasn't trying to be linked to the mess and ceased his contributions altogether, wow. opting to take him out of any future releases. 
Russell is now living his best life out in Bali and has been since 2017, ever since the first wave of allegations took heat. And it doesn't seem as if he'll be returning anytime soon. Coincidence? You can respect Russell's country. Let me say this, folks. And, uh, and for, uh, you know, one thing that I appreciate about the, about social media and about the internet is that it's forever. Is that it's forever. That's why I believe that those of us who share this, uh, this space should be very conscious of the fact of what we say. And I want to say this, <clears throat> I want to say this be to the men who are in power. Men who have, who exercise power financially, who exercise power in terms of title. Um, I think it's the other men in these same environments that need to be firm and not tolerate this kind of behavior. All too often, what we do a lot of times as men, we, we tend to laugh away or giggle away or give a pass to this kind of behavior as it relates to other women and this is not a slap against men no i'm talking to the men that allow this kind of nonsense i'm talking to you this is not to all men i'm talking to you the men that sit and think this is cute the ones that laugh and joke and giggle at watching women that are in the environments like this, whether it's in the workplace or whether it's in a careered environment like an actor or an actress, and it's kind of blown away as something small, as if it's, it's funny, it's something to laugh at, when in reality it's not funny at all because um, I'm not naive to the fact that right now I guarantee you there's so many women right now and men right now as I speak that are silent to the abuse that they've already endured for years for years and some even under the sound of my voice right now they're still enduring that same abuse but yet they're afraid to speak they're afraid to tell anyone they're afraid to say anything to anyone about the abuse that they're that they're experiencing and they're experiencing it daily many have been graped repeatedly on the job site fondled touched inappropriately or spoken to inappropriately and i don't believe this is going to stop until i believe men in general become uh more aware of the problem and then become and then take a position where they're not going to tolerate that and because i'm gonna tell you something what kind of what kind of man are you first of all if you're okay with that kind of behavior in your presence how is that funny how is that entertaining how is that laughable you know and uh, these women are your daughters. These women are your nieces. These women are your granddaughters. Uh, I have granddaughters. I'll tell you right now, um, if I heard anything like that, <laughs> and I'm going to just leave it right there. I won't add anything to that statement, but I think you get the point. Um, I don't think this is funny at all. And I don't think it's cute. I think it's really sad. And my heart goes out to every single female victim that's out there that are truly victims. I mean, truly victims. And you've been in your own prison for years, afraid to speak. Because you're afraid of the repercussions either on the job site or you're afraid of the repercussions in terms of your career path that you've taken or you're aspiring to do something in your life and 
the individuals that you're facing this kind of uh, behavior from, you're afraid to say anything about it because you feel it, it's going to stop you or block you from your career path or your dreams. I say, tell somebody and tell them now. Don't wait. Tell them now. The truth will be on your side if you are truly a victim. And I believe the outcomes will be in your favor if you, in fact, are truly a victim. And again, to those that use these kind of uh, circumstances as an opportunity for yourself and you, in fact, are not a victim. I would say that you are worse, you, you are worse than those that committed the act because you make it hard for the true victims to get real justice. You make it so very difficult for women to be believed when they find themselves with the courage to come forward to tell their story. You make it difficult for them, for those of you that are simply in it to benefit, and yet you were not a victim. So for all of the victims, women and men that have been victims of sexual assault, rape of any kind, rather on the workplace, in your personal life, I say to you, don't keep silent, speak. Don't keep silent, speak. Because why should the victim go on living their best life while you live your worst? And with that being said, I thank all of you for getting on the stream tonight. I think this was a very necessary topic to deal with tonight. And uh, again, shout out to all my new subscribers on YouTube. If you uh, uh, see the stream, make sure you hit the subscribe button and share button. Get this kind of message out. You know, I think it needs to be spoken of more. Um, I will say to you, you're not unbelieved. I believe you. If you say you've been victim to this kind of assault, I believe you. Just make sure you're telling the truth so others will believe you. With that being said, again, I thank you for getting on the stream tonight. This has been another show of Let's Talk About It Now, Uncensored, where we talk about all the subjects, all the topics, though controversial, though sensitive. This is what I intend to do. And with that, have a great night, folks. Shout out to all of you on Facebook. And have a fantastic evening, what's left of it. And I'll be speaking to you all tomorrow, God willing. With that being said, we are out. God bless. Have a good night, folks. I want to say shout out. Shout out to Alfreda. Love you, sis. Shout out to Legion. And shout out to all of you if I missed your name. Again, I thank you all for getting on the stream tonight. I look forward to speaking to you all tomorrow night. Tomorrow afternoon. I think I'm going to do a stream tomorrow afternoon. Have a great night, folks.